Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at Demonic Pact Combo, and this is one of my all-time favorite magic cards, Demonic Pact, a 4-man enchantment, saying at the beginning of your upkeep, choose one mode that hasn't been chosen yet, and there's four different modes to choose from. We can either deal four damage to any targets and we also gain four life. We could make the opponent discard two cards. We can also draw two cards ourselves, and last but not least, we lose the game. So that's usually the last mode you want to select, which implies that if we play Demonic Pact, we afterwards get three more turns to either win the game or somehow get rid of our own Demonic Pact. And in this deck, we're going to choose for the latter by gifting the opponent a Demonic Pact using Harmless Offering. Target opponent gains control of target permanent we control. And if we time it correctly, we've already chosen the three beneficial modes on Demonic Pact. We gift it to the opponent, they go to their upkeep, and now losing the game is the only option left. So that's what we're trying trying to set up. And now we also have two copies of Greed's Gambit, which is pretty similar to Demonic Pact in that we want to gift it to the opponent, but unlike Demonic Pact where we want to wait to get the three beneficial modes, we can immediately gift the Greed's Gambit as we'll get all the value when it enters the battlefield, as it will draw three cards, gain six life, and create three 2-1 Flying Bat tokens. But now at the beginning of our end step, we discard a card, lose two life, and sacrifice a creature. So the sooner we can give Greed's Gambit to the opponent, the better. And unlike Demonic Pact, where we can maybe sacrifice it or destroy it to get rid of it. Here, when Greed's Gambit leaves the battlefield, we still have to discard three cards, lose six life, and sacrifice three creatures. So it kind of undoes all the good it did when it entered the battlefield. So we really want to give it to the opponent with Harmless Offering, or of course, just win the game with the Demonic Pact in the meantime. So that's our game plan, and to help find all these combo pieces to make sure we find Harmless Offering before it's too late, we also have two copies of Diabolic Intent, which requires us to sacrifice a creature as an additional cost, but then can search for any card in our deck. And then we also have two copies of Beseech the Mirror, which can also be bargained to immediately cast a card with mana value 4 or less after searching it up, and there's plenty of artifact tokens we can sacrifice to enable bargain here. So that can also maybe find a Demonic Pact if we don't have one already, and then immediately cast it. And then looking at the rest of our deck, we've got a little bit of early interaction with four copies of Fatal Push. Can also easily enable Revolt with all our treasure tokens. And then we also have two copies of Thoughtseize, mostly to take away opposing counter spells that might try to counter our harmless offering, so we don't lose the game to our own Demonic Pact. Could run more copies of Thoughtseize, of course, but the problem is if we have too many interactive spells and not enough ways to find our harmless offering, we might end up losing to our own Demonic Pact anyways, so that's something we want to avoid. And then to make sure we can maybe cast these four mana enchantments as early as turn three, we also have a bit of mana acceleration. The Iron Crag is a pretty straightforward way to do so. We can also sacrifice it to Bargain if we need to do so with Besiege the Mirror. And we can also sacrifice it to our own Deadly Dispute, which can sacrifice either a creature or artifact to draw two cards and make a treasure token. So this also pairs extremely well with our one mana creatures, Greedy Freebooter and Shambling Ghast will both leave behind a treasure token if we want to, if they die. So going turn one Ghast into a turn two Deadly Dispute will give us a ton of treasure tokens to try and cast our Demonic Pact on turn three. And then tying it all together, we also have four copies of Fable of the Mirror Breaker as another way to give us a ton of card selection on the second chapter. If the uh, Shaman survives, it can also help us ramp and make more mana. And all these tokens, either the Shaman token or the Treasure tokens, also play quite well with our Deadly Dispute. And then it's also an extra creature we can maybe sacrifice to our Diabolic Intent. And going turn one Freebooter or Shambling Ghast into a turn two Intent, finding our Demonic Pact can also help cast it on turn three, since we only need a single Treasure from Freebooter booter or shambling gas to make that happen so that's another common play pattern and then our mana base has a few utility lands, two copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant, which we can easily play in the first two turns, and then a castle to maybe draw a few more cards for those grindier matchups. And then we have nine swamps to make sure a castle comes into play untapped, five basics, and then Blood Crypt also counts as a swamp. And then we've got a bunch more red blank dual lands. Not that we need a ton of red mana just for Harmless Offering and Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Plus we also have our treasure tokens, which can fix for colors. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see of the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's a little sketchy. No real interaction early, no cheap creature to sack to dispute. So we're basically hoping for a turn three fable to be fast enough, but on the draw, I kind of doubt it. So I'll take a mulligan. This is not a whole lot better. I can maybe just keep packed offering and then hope that Freebooter dies 
by maybe jumping the opponent's creature. If we want to play around an opposing Thoughtseize, I could also keep the Greed's Gambit and get rid of my own Thoughtseize, for instance. But uh, I'm just going to hope we don't get Thoughtseized. Okay, found the Deadly Dispute. Although if I play Freebooter, I may not be able to cast it next turn. So instead, maybe play a Tapland, and then next turn we can both Freebooter and Thoughtseize. Sure. Opponent blue red. Find the Iron Crag. Yeah, I could uh, just fire off some discard. See what they're working with. I see. So it's a combo counter spell deck. Prismari Command can also hit the Iron Crag. Although Rewind is going to be pretty annoying. So I think that's worth taking. And then they probably have Indominable Creativity to combo with the Treasure Tokens to get a Torrential Gear Hulk. So that's going to be pretty tough to face. The hope is that we can sneak in this Demonic Pact before they can counter it. And then, uh, yeah, Harmless Offering could be pretty effective too. Since Iron Crag just gets destroyed by Prismari Command, I'm more in favor of Deadly Dispute here to hit my land drop for the turn. And Hive is good enough. Okay. Not gonna play Iron Crag. Opponent's gonna cycle this Prismari Command. The treasure can enable creativity, so... Hoping they didn't draw into it. Fable's fine. Two unknown cards in hand, which could include a counter spell. But uh, I think we're going for Demonic Pact. Our opponent will get close to just hard casting Magma Opus as well with the extra treasure from the Shaman, but it's not like I can really stop it here. So, can play Iron Crag into Demonic Pact or just play Demonic Pact. I guess we'll get the Iron Crag in play too. Our opponent pausing could just be Magma Opus holding priority. At least that's my hope. Alright, Demonic Pact resolved. And once in play, it's not going to be too easy for the opponent to remove. They might have an Odawara to bounce it. And then with double Harmless Offering, we get a couple attempts at uh, gifting the Demonic Pact. Another Prismari Command destroys Iron Crag. And we get to untap. Probably start by making them discard two. Then we can play Fable. And then next turn I could already try to cast a Harmless Offering. So that if they counter it I can try again on the following turn. And there's Creativity for one, getting Torrential Gear Hulk, which will get back Magma Opus. Drawing them two cards and uh, taking out our Shaman. And they now also have a Reflection of Kiki Jiki ready to copy the Gear Hulk, so that's a lot of damage coming our way. Now we can just deal four damage on the Reflection, which is probably the play. And then just hope to survive another turn. Because I can now Harmless Offering. Our opponent would basically get another Demonic Pack trigger to draw two. But they only get one attack step. And currently we wouldn't be dead unless they have another Magma Opus. Do I discard anything? Fable probably doesn't do much for me. Beseech also probably not that useful right now. Finding like a Fatal Push I can cast alongside Harmless Offering or a Thought Seize could be more useful. Alright, we found a Chum Blocker. So, I kind of want this Harmless Offering to get countered in a weird way. Because then they don't get the extra Demonic Pack trigger. And that's what potentially happens. Nope, just a turn lesson. And a Spell Pierce, alright. 
So that sort of worked out. Put us down to one card in hand. So we can play Freebooter to Chump. And then next turn we Harmless Offering again. And hopefully that one resolves. Prismari Command can clear a path. We take 11 damage here. And uh, if I keep a land on top... I mean, with a treasure we can already pay for a spell pierce, so the land wouldn't really make a difference. Drawing a Thoughtseize might. And another Fable, so our opponent's tapped out, and the second Harmless Offering should get the job done. Even get to draw two cards. Perfect. Well, this game went about as well as it could have given the circumstances. And now our opponent faces the difficult decision to lose the game. And that's why you shouldn't deal with demons. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with the uh, Keeper. Turn one gas, turn to dispute. Can uh, ramp out our demonic pact quite nicely. Can even take out a mana elf if our opponent plays one on turn one here. Since we only need one treasure, opponent on a just guy deck of sorts. In that case, I'll dispute now, so we don't have to worry about a counter spell. Okay, so we've got some options next turn, in terms of which four drop to play, and our opponent does not appear to be keeping up too many counter spells. So I think we just start with Demonic Pact then, because that's more likely to actually win us the game. We already have Besiege to find our Harmless Offering. And then I'll save my treasure for now. So we can start by... Either making the opponent discard, or we can draw two. Let's make them discard two, since we have plenty of plays we can make already. We of course have to watch out for a counter spell, dealing with harmless offering. And then for now, could just go Fable plus Freebooter. Could play Greed's Gambit, just to make some two ones. I think I'll uh, go with Fable plus Freebooter. And then I may end up discarding the Greed's Gambit. Now we have plenty of things we can sacrifice to bargain. Opponent makes a shark, so I guess this is maybe a Transmogrify deck. Okay, we'll draw two. Don't think dealing four to the shark was quite worth it. And then discard Freebooter and maybe a land. And then the goal is to resolve Harmless Offering, but we also have Besiege as backup, so we can start by attacking. Opponent trades. Maybe we want to try and cast Harmless Offering and Besiege in the same turn, so they would need two counter spells to stop the combo. And then for now... I mean, I could also Greed's Gambit and then Harmless Offering the Greed's Gambit. I guess we'll start there, see if that resolves. And maybe we'll draw into a second Harmless Offering anyway. blue White can also have answers to enchantments to get rid of the Demonic Pact if we give it to them right now. Okay, so... Yeah, I guess we're not in a hurry to cast anything. Could play another Fable, perhaps. Or I can just sacrifice a bat and then discard something random like Fatal Push and then hopefully next turn we'll be able to both Harmless Offering and Besiege or I can sack two treasures to play Fable and then next turn assuming we get to attack with our Shamans we'll still have quite a bit of mana to work with and maybe that helps me dig towards another Harmless Offering All right, March deals with our Fable. Interestingly, they chose the one on Chapter 2. 
So yeah, had we given them the uh, Demonic Pact, they would have been able to get rid of it. The fairy, that's fine. It's gonna plus, so they will have two mana up at most. So either Harmless Offering or Besiege should resolve. And then, assuming they can't remove the Demonic Pact, that could be game. Can deal 4-2 to Teferi as well. Not going to win this. And then Fatal Push and a land can go, although I guess I might want to land. Let's get rid of Fable. Okay, step one attack. Send two creatures at Teferi, make sure that dies. Because yeah, I guess this trigger is at the beginning of upkeep, so even if they remove Demonic Pact, the trigger will already be on the stack, so it doesn't matter if they remove it then. So with that in mind, I could also Besiege and get a Thoughtseize, just to make sure the coast is clear. Although the problem there is if they have multiple cheap counter spells, they might still be able to cast one of them. So maybe step one is just Harmless Offering. See if that resolves. And if they counter now, we know to get another Harmless Offering. Get lost, I see. So they can remove the enchantment. So won't be able to win with Demonic Pact. So instead, now we maybe want to give them the Greed's Gambit and aim for the late game here. And then, uh, sure, I'll wait on Hive, save myself a treasure. And we can sack a uh, map token. Could also get another Demonic Pact and just start stringing those together. But it feels like uh, Harmless Offering here is pretty good. Now that our opponent's tapped out. So if they remove the Greed's Gambits, then um, they would still have to discard three cards and lose six life. So that seems pretty effective. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn to Iron Crag, could set up turn three Greed's Gambits with uh, Besiege as a way to find Harmless Offering. Planes into Initiate, so white aggro. Turn to Thalia could mess us up pretty bad. This is a matchup we're having kind of a one-off sweeper. Could be pretty useful. As something to find with Besiege or Diabolic Intents. And yeah, we see the impact of Thalia on turn two. So I could Deadly Dispute sacking the Iron Crag. I think that might be necessary because if I don't draw a land next turn, we're not doing anything. So at least I can maybe string together some cards. Okay, play a tap line and pass, and then next turn I could play a Greed Gambit. Although we're already pretty far behind, Initiate can also destroy enchantments, and Adlin applies an enormous amount of pressure. So kind of the perfect start here for the aggro deck. Fatal Push, an answer to either Adlin or Thalia. So that's uh, not a bad card. So what's the plan? I mean, Adlin is what's killing me. If I take out Thalia, I still won't be able to play Greed's Gambit this turn. So maybe it is just play Greed's Gambit. And then, I mean, I guess Rapun could attack and then use Initiate to blow it up and make me sack everything. So that's not necessarily too helpful. So I can Fatal Push with Revolt. Maybe after casting a Deadly Dispute. Found another Fatal Push. Alright, Adlin has to go. Aspirant is next. And a Bodyguard can protect Thalia as well. Decided to go for the Aspirant instead. So we're taking 6 damage here, down to 8, and then next turn we'll likely take lethal. Opponent playing it safe. 
and going for counter on Mutavolt in case there's a board wipe incoming. So, could go for the Greed's Gambit now, but again, there's the hopeful initiate problem. So I can take out Thalia and then have three mana left for Fable. It's probably the play. Wouldn't be shocked if they had another Thalia in hand, which is why they didn't bother protecting with Bodyguard. And then we have both Greed's Gambit and Diabolic Intent to get Harmless Offering, potentially. But that might be too slow. Mutavolt gets busy. They'll get to train the Initiate as well. They might have Brave the Elements in hand to attack past the Shaman. In which case I can still jump Mutavolt to survive. So yeah, that's 8, 9, 10. So if I block a two-powered creature, I take 9 damage, so I have to jump. And uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, go to 1. And yep, second Thalia, as we suspected, is going to be the final nail here. I can cast a Greed's Gambit. Don't know if uh, keeping a tap plan does much for me here. Yeah, we can cast a Greed's Gambit, but uh, that's not going to be good enough. And as we've said, the Hopeful Initiate can also use its ability to destroy it at any point, which also wins them the game. So yeah, turn to Thalia's kind of the story of this game, pretty much. Shambling Ghast isn't bad, so now I can actually sack the Ghast to Greed's Gambit to take out Thalia. Or Luminarch Aspirant. And one Besiege can go. I guess getting rid of the Aspirants gets rid of the extra plus one counters. Thalia has first strike, so that's also pretty annoying. Let's go with Thalia. But if our opponent attacks all out, we're still going to be in trouble here. But uh, yeah, it's mostly if they see the line of hopeful initiate blow up my Greed's Gambit that we're super dead. If they don't, we maybe get another turn. Right, Skyclave can also get rid of the Gambit, so that accomplishes the same. Okay, GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with uh, a hand I should probably keep. Can play Freebooter on one, Diabolic Intent on turn two, although Duress will probably mess up our sequencing. So yeah, if they take the Diabolic Intent, we can just Dispute on turn two. And then we drew the Demonic Pact, which is probably the card I wanted to get anyways, so that worked out. Harvester, this opponent could be on the Vampire deck. And I could Deadly Dispute and maybe hit a Thought Seize to take away Sorin. I'll keep the cliffs on top. Alright, we actually hit Thoughtseize, so I can cast it and then next turn still Demonic Pact. Just a Dusk Legion Zealot in hand, so not the most exciting hand for the opponent. Can't afford to Fatal Push the Harvester since I need my treasure. Now the bad news is our opponent will have more discard spells to maybe take away Harmless Offering. And our opponent actually top decked Sorin. Okay. At least they don't have anything they can cheat into play. Opponent deciding to sack the Harvester, because I guess they know about Fatal Push. That's acceptable. And we'll play Demonic Pact. So our opponent is hoping to top deck. They do get a redraw with a Blood Token as well. And we're hoping to win with Demonic Pact. Another Harvester. We'll see if they sacrifice it. Demonic Pact can also damage Sorin for what it's worth. Which keeps plussing, but now going for a counter. 
So I can make them discard their one card, or I can just draw two. Can deal four to Sorin, so it cannot minus three anymore. That would maybe be the safest play, and then Fatal Push Harvester still play Fable. That seems pretty good. This way, if they top deck a Thought Seize, I still have my draw 2 from Demonic Pact to maybe draw into another Harmless Offering. So Sorin just plussing, and a Bank Buster can draw. Also makes my discard a bit less effective, but uh, for now we can draw. Find Shambling Ghast. And then, I guess I don't really need Fatal Push. A land can go. And a Greed's Gambit's not bad either. So if I want to play it safe, I think I just Harmless Offering now. Our opponent can make me discard two cards, but who cares when they're going to lose the game in two turns. And then, um, I guess I could Shambling Ghast Dispute first. All right, let's just do this now. So they will make me discard two. Can keep the Greed's Gambit. But I don't see their deck dealing 19 damage in one turn. But I didn't want to risk our opponent finding an answer to Harmless Offering and then not getting a backup. Their opponent goes digging. I don't think they have any answers to enchantments in their deck. And our opponent explodes. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. What do we think of our hand? That's keepable. Got early removal. And then we're counting on Fable to find us Demonic Pact and friends. And then Diabolic Intent can also maybe find one of them if we're willing to sack. Maybe the uh, Shaman token, or possible we end up drawing some of our 1-drops as well. Can keep a Fatal Push on 1, play Time Blood Crypt on 2. Opponent on what appears to be Blue-Red Phoenix. So, don't expect too many counter spells necessarily. They might have 1 or 2. They mainly have Creature Removal, and then Card Draw. I would be sad if Fable gets countered, but they might just be sitting on the uh, fairy to fill their graveyard end of turn. The Shaman probably doesn't get to attack, but the next turn we could already play Demonic Pact, hang on to Diabolic Intent to get Harmless Offering, and then the opponent shouldn't have too many ways to interact with our uh, enchantment. Although we did see Ashiok actually, can prevent us from searching, that could be effective. Opponent considers. So this Arc Light Phoenix likely to make a return. Shaman down as expected. And then they need another one mana spell here. It's gonna be consider. Okay. So one Phoenix coming back unless they surveil another one. They do not. Fatal Push, not the best answer to Arclight Phoenix. We need to enable Revolt first. So I think I just ditch double Fatal Push and then go back to back Demonic Pact and hope they can find the uh, answers we need. Can also deal for and gain four, so it's not bad when uh, facing down the Phoenix. And then, yeah, as I've said, they don't have many ways to interact with enchantments. Maybe an Odawara to bounce it or. I guess we see Brazen Borrower can actually hit it too. That would be a good way to slow us down if they can cast it here. Opponent goes for a Lightning Axe instead. And then they'll be able to Treasure Cruise. Draw three. Next turn, 
We could start by taking out the Phoenix, although it's probably going to come back on the following turn. So I could just draw two, especially for opponents holding Arclight Phoenix. I don't want to make them discard. Maybe part of the reason why they grab the Lightning Axe is if they have Arclight Phoenix stuck in hand. They will be able to take out our Reflection of Kiki-Jiki. So yeah, I'll start by drawing two. And then we've got plenty of tutor effects to find Harmless Offering. Could also go for it now, before they can take out the Reflection with Lightning Axe, which is not unreasonable. Although then I won't get to play Demonic Pact. So maybe instead a Deadly Dispute sacking Reflection and then cast Demonic Pact here. And then we can wait on Diabolic Intent, hoping Ashiok doesn't show up. Alright, Thought Seize is handy and we already have Harmless Offering. So yeah, all is going according to plan. Next turn we can gain 8, if our opponent gets us low enough. And then Thought Seize can check if the coast is clear for Harmless Offering to set up the win. Still gonna take us a few turns. And if our opponent has answers, they will likely find them with all this card draw. But that's why I wanted to get a second pact going in case they can bounce one of them. Getting double pact going can also maybe set up a turn where if our opponent has exactly four cards in hand, we can make them discard all of them. But it doesn't seem to be the case here. So yeah, just a one Phoenix hitting us for three. And a Prankster. So the safest here would be to deal some damage and gain life. So if I take out the Phoenix, it's probably just going to come right back. So let's take out the Prankster instead. And then I can also deal four upstairs. Or I can draw two once again. Let's just deal four upstairs. Alright, another Demonic Pact. So I can start with Thought Seize, and then maybe play Iron Crag into another Pact, and then next turn go for Harmless Offering. Alright, so they do have Is a Charm, which can counter non-creature spells unless we pay two, and Iteration to copy it. So in that case, we would have to pay four, but we should be able to. So yeah, I'm not too worried about any of these, but I guess we'll take the Is a Charm then. And then Iron Crag into Demonic Pact, and then next turn I'll have to go for Harmless Offering. At 17 we're very safe. So, yeah. Opponent will need to top deck an answer or a card draw spell that can dig them into an answer. Because all these removal spells aren't doing it. Alright, Ledger Shredder. Can uh, cast another spell to enable Connive. May as well go for Iteration. Opponent cast Opt. But now they're mostly tapped out. So at most they could have a Spell Pierce for a single blue. And once it goes to their upkeep, the Demonic Pack trigger would go on the stack. So then it's too late for them to bounce it should they find another Brazen Borrower. Alright, so a bunch of triggers go off here. Can make the opponent discard two. Discard two. And discard two. Just to make sure. And it's ended up being another Ledger Shredder in hand, besides all the removal. And then I have to make sure to select the correct Demonic Pact. We even drew the last copy. So, opponent can lose the game. It's their choice. I may as well get the last Pact in play. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. 
All right, so we get to see our Demonic Pact combo in action, and I'm quite pleased with where this newest iteration ended up. Now, of course, we only have two copies of Greed's Gambit, so it's mostly just a backup plan to Demonic Pact, but it's also a way to justify running four copies of Harmless Offering in the main deck, as opposed to maybe only having one or two, and then more tutor effects to try and find them. But at least with four Harmless Offering, there's less of a risk of losing to your own Demonic Pact, which can be a little bit humiliating, so I'm pretty happy with this build. And then I'm also a fan of trying to ramp into these four mana enchantments ahead of schedule, using Iron Crank and using all the treasure tokens, and those one drops also help set up your diabolic intent, which is the perfect tutor for this type of strategy. So yeah, all in all, a pretty neat build. And if you're a fan of these unusual combo decks with unusual win conditions, then you can certainly give it a shot. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.